Hey everyone, I'm back today with a video on showing my little button cluster embellishments and um, just kind of wanted to show a way to do these without having to sew. These are the ones that I sewed on, but I wanted to show a way that we could do this without having to sew them just because it's difficult, it's time consuming, um, it can be mildly frustrating <laughs> to thread a needle and sew the buttons on um so i just wanted to share my tips and tricks on how to do that as well as making these little swivel um swivel card embellishments i guess you could call them um so these are the ones that i did sew and so you i mean you can see the thread there like that but if that really doesn't bother you and you are unable to to sew them with a needle and thread you could just make them um without and they still look really cute because they still have the button there so I don't really think it's that big of a deal and I just love being able to mix the fabrics with the papers and everything so that's why I made these but let's get started on making the little button and fabric clusters first so all I do is I just have like my um, pile of scraps here of different laces and fabrics and stuff. Um, and I'm just going to be cutting them to like roughly the same size. So I want to start with um, my base piece. So I'm going to start with that like bottom piece first. And that's really going to determine how big your cluster is going to be. So I try to keep these pretty small just so they can fit anywhere. You could make bigger ones, but then I think a lot of times the button is smaller most of the time. So it looks weird when it's like a big embellishment with a small button on it. So just keep that in mind, but like just really play around with it. Cause I think everybody has a different style and what they think looks good. So let me just show you sorry about that um so i just cut out this little piece it's not any like size or shape it's just kind of got rough edges and everything so i might start with that as my base piece sometimes this does change as you go just like when you're playing around with the different fabrics um and laces but you could also just do squares and then like line them up you know like do I don't know, <laughs> like turn them, you know, and I'll show you in a little bit. But um, I really love this old like crocheted lace knit. I don't know. If, I, don't, I don't even know if it's what you even call it, but it's almost like sweatery material. So I always try to like put this one on top if I can, just so it doesn't get covered up too much. But um, I'm just going to also cut this big piece of lace that I have. I don't have like a lot of tiny, tiny scraps, so I just kind of make my own. But when I do have tiny scraps, I try to save them for this purpose. Okay, so there's like another little piece here. And if I, I don't, maybe I'll layer that. That's kind of big. So, and then even if you cut these and then lay them on top of each other, you can always like cut them after. So don't worry about that. And then you can kind of see that little piece poking through the bottom, but you still have the lace on the top. And then I'll probably, so there isn't like a real formula. I think some, most of these have like four-ish layers. So that totally works. And you will end up covering up some of the things. So that's okay too. And then I just kind of like play around with what looks good or what I think looks good. Like that might be, that's kind of cool looking. I don't know, the scrap, I think like the scrappier the better. The more like shaggy and scrappy it is, it just looks better to me. So I don't mind that. Um, and I might, if I put that piece on it, I'm gonna cover that up, so I might not do that. Another thing that I did was, um, so my really good friend Val made this button cluster right here and she did like long layers of fabric as well as the cluster up top, which I really like that idea. And it goes along with just the length of these. So that's another good tip too. So I was kind of thinking about taking these strips of fabric that I had and then just attaching them 
like that and then just cutting it off. So I'll probably just let it hang down a little bit and then rip it. Okay, so there's that. Um, kind of like that the way it is. That's perfect for now. It might not look like when you're doing this too, it's kind of like clusters. When you're first baking them, it looks, they're just kind of plain and boring looking and you're not sure if they're going to work or not, but don't judge that part of it because they always end up, once you add more stuff and then you add them to the card, it'll just kind of all come together. So just tr try to trust the process. I know it's hard. So this is the point where I would normally take my button and I would sew the button on but since we're not doing that and we're trying to just make it easy I just have my stapler my little tiny attacher and I'm gonna go in the middle of that and just attach it like that and it's perfect so then all you're gonna do is just take your button whatever one you think is gonna look good probably do that and then you're just gonna glue it on I don't have any fabric tack fabric tack on me I ran out so this would be a lot easier and it would honestly not take as long to dry if I had it but this um, art glitter glue actually works pretty well on fabric it just takes a while to dry so in that case when I use the art glitter glue I just take like a um, clothespin or some kind of clip to make sure that it's like held down when it's um, drying and sorry, my voice is kind of like hoarse. It's like going in and out because I'm still getting over being sick. So I apologize for that. So we made that one. I set that one aside. Um, we can go ahead and make maybe one or two more just so you can kind of see the process. I didn't end up using this. Maybe I'll use this one. And um, yeah, it's, I just love this because you can make hundreds of these and not even realize that you could be sitting down watching tv or you could be you know just wanting to i don't know i guess just craft and kind of zone out you know and relax and this is a really good project for that so i'm gonna try to rip this there you go i have this little i think this is an old handkerchief because it's i don't know it's kind of big for a handkerchief maybe it's a tablecloth i'm not exactly sure but i've been cutting that up and using it so here's my little piece there, and then I'll probably cut another one of these. I hope, oops, I hope I'm in frame. Um, okay, so th these ones are kind of looking like they're turning out a little more square, which is okay. It's probably good to show an example of what that looks like. So um, I'm gonna just put it on there like that, that's perfect. And I know like a lot of people have done these already. So if you wanted more tips or inspiration, there's tons of videos on button clusters. Just search that on YouTube and everyone has their style. You can make these colorful if you want. You can make them with all different types of fabric. So that's another awesome thing about this. Okay, so there's my like little piece of tool. It's kind of hard to see it. And then I'll probably just put this one on top of that and so like I was saying earlier about the square pieces this is kind of ending up like that and it's mostly square pieces and I'm just kind of staggering them so they're trading off and they're not just all lined up in a square I hope that makes sense so there's my cluster I'm just gonna staple in the middle you could use this with any size stapler but I think the bigger, obviously a bigger stapler, you're going to have to have a bigger button like this to, like, versus this one to cover the staple. And if you don't, I mean, you don't have to. You could just leave it like that, too. So I'm just going to glue that. I like that one. So in the Angie journal videos that I've been watching, she uses these really beautiful... Um, I think they're like pearl, mother of pearl or abalone or some sort of like shiny iridescent vintagey looking buttons, which I really would love to get my hands on. Um, 
but I'm using wooden ones because that's uh, that's all I have. I don't have like a ton of buttons or anything. So again, I'm just going to clip this on here so that it stays glued. And um, let's make one more because these are just really fun to make. I'll make another one with a long, a long piece hanging down. And you could just, you could, like, I don't even know why. You don't have to do this right now. You could just come back and then glue that on the piece of fabric. So we could do that too. Uh, let's see. I'll take another really like this. So I'm not even, I'm just kind of going with it. That's another thing that I like about this is it's like it's intuitive. You're just kind of going with it, like what looks right, what feels right. And that's a good thing, I feel like, when it comes to being creative. Okay, so there's that, I like that. And then I'll probably cut this lace. I think it's the same like thinking as making paper clusters of you're gonna cover stuff up so don't worry about it I mean they're just little scraps you know don't use anything that's like sacred or <laughs> that you really want to like cherish okay so there I put those ones that one together this one's always this one's just like the star of the show I feel like it's just it's the mo it's like thick you can see it so i'm totally okay with that so i'll probably use this button on there here's what it looks like with like the little little buttons they're cute um and then there's like a giant button but i love how they all have their own little personality uh, oops i forgot to staple okay so let's staple that this one on so yeah I hope I did enough examples to show you guys that these are just really easy and fun to make okay I'm gonna clip this and I'm gonna set it aside and then we'll work on making these little cards now so um I have a ton of ledger paper and printables that I could be using which I did for these but I wanted to show an example of um, if you don't have that, so I'm just going to start with a piece of cardstock, just like a scrap that I had. And then, um, from here is where you're going to do your cluster layering. So really I'm just like going through my papers and seeing, you know, what would work color wise. Like I don't want to do that cause it's too close to the same color. So, um, let's see. I have some music paper here. I like that. Um, and I'm noticing another thing with these of just that it's when it's a little bit thinner, it just looks better because you can see the card behind it. So I'm just gonna stick with that formula, I think. Here's a piece that I have, like an extra little scrap. So we can put we can put that there. And then if you want, you can just stick the cluster on top of it like that and like make it simple. Or you can do some more layering like this and add like another strip of fabric or pa more paper. So I did want to show that too. Um, I have some of this like embossed, um, embossed tracing paper it's like vellum I think it's more like vellum than anything and I like using that because it kind of adds like another layer of interest to it so I'm just going to line this up and then make this a little bit shorter tear that off and then see if I like that on top of it so right now I'm just figuring out what I think might look good and then I'm gonna like adjust everything after I do that so I'm just gonna probably do that so trim this 
I really like the frayed edges look, you know, when it's all like tatted like that. So I'm gonna, I usually cut the top part for these cause you're not gonna really see it. So there's that part. And then this, this cluster is a little bit, it might be a little too big for this. So this might work. That's cute. Okay. So once you have your papers laid out the way you want, you're just gonna glue, or I'm sorry, you're not gluing. I'm sorry, I'm totally, I'm still kind of like loopy a little bit from being sick. I feel like my brain kind of gets like foggy when I get sick, so. Um, this is where if you want to do, if you wanna just leave it and glue it and make it simple, then glue all your layers down and then, you know, attach it to your card. But since I was talking about making these swivel tags, like I did in these, see they swivel? Because of that hidden brad, like I showed in my last video. So if you didn't see that, it's, it's really simple. I'm just going to take a brad, like the smallest one you have. If you have big ones, I think that's fine too. You'll just have to um, put them a little bit further back so you can't see them. So I'm going to take all my pieces, line them up, which I did not do a very good job at, but, um, okay. So I'm lining up all my pieces on my card and then figuring out where my cluster is going to go. I'll probably have this hang right here. That's perfect. So, um, the secret to this and what I have found is peeling back the first like one or two layers of the cluster and then you're going to punch your hole under. So it, basically the reason why I'm doing this is so that the brad is hidden. So I'm just peeling this back right here and then I'm going to punch my little hole for my brad and then I'm going to put my brad in. These are so tiny. Okay, there we go. So I put my brad in. And then now you have your little swivel. See? Ta-da! <laughs> that one turned out pretty good. So, and I love it because like even the fabric thing swivels. But you don't have to do that. And honestly, it does add an extra step. So if you're trying to do something easy, then... Definitely, you don't have to do it. You could just glue that or you could glue the fabric cluster onto one of these pieces underneath and then all of that can swivel. But there's an easy way to do it if you don't have ledger paper, if you don't have any like fancy paper or whatever you wanna call it, there's your simple, simple way to do it. So we can do another one um, and I will use my ledger paper just so you can see an example of that because it looks it does look really good with the ledger so here is i have some old ledger here so i'm just gonna i don't know eyeball it how big i want my card to be and like i said the thinner the, i don't know the thinner style looks a little bit better but we could I don't know, i'll just use this piece and then I'm gonna line up some paper. Let's see what might look good. If anybody else wants to try this, and I would love to like see your rendition of this, I always like to see how people's creativity comes out and how it comes out in different ways. That's like one of my favorite things about art and just, you know, the junk journaling community in general is that like we all do similar things but they all look really different a lot of the time and that's what's amazing about it because everyone is really different so it's just cool to see the personalities come out so I have some textured paper here I'm probably I don't know if I'm gonna layer that maybe I'll do some more music paper on that so I know I like this green one I'll probably use this 
Let me see if this is that's a good a good width. So as you can see, I'm not very exact. Um, I just kind of like look and and rip and tear and cut as I go, just because I just like to craft that way, I guess. So I'll just put that there. Okay, I'm gonna fold this here. Okay, perfect. And then maybe I'll put my music paper. It looks good too when you have all the layers kind of like peeking out because if you stack them right on top of each other and they're the same width, it, you're not going to be able to see it unless there's a little bit at the bottom and that's not terrible. I just found that I like seeing the layers kind of pop out a little bit. So I'm just going to do that and then that's a really big one. Um... Yeah. Maybe I'll do another piece of that. Okay. So that looks good. We'll line that up. I hope I'm in frame. Okay. So there. I like that. And then we have this little cluster here we could do. That's one of the ones that I sewed. Um, this. Nope, I like the first one. I feel like that happens a lot too. It's like always the first one that I pick I end up liking the most. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with this too much. Okay. I think we'll do that. That's cute. So again, I'm going to line up my layers how I want them to be. I'm going to pull back the top layers. And then you don't have to punch a hole because it's, if you're using a small brad, it, you can't see it. Like, you won't be able to. Or was I going to say, if you're using a small brad, you don't need that big of a hole. So that's another plus to these little teeny tiny ones. So here's my brad. Oops. I forgot to punch the bottom layer. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to put the brad in. I got it in all my layers. I'm putting the brad in and then I'm pulling that back. So now you can't see it. There you go. They're all swiveling. Yay. So um, this video kind of ran long. I apologize. I always try to make my tutorials really quick. But um, I just wanted to be able to show like a thorough process of how to make these. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or anything please don't hesitate to reach out and I really appreciate you guys watching and you know taking time out of your day to watch my videos and thank you to all my new subscribers hope you have a good rest of your day bye